Welcome back to Laughing in the Dark, the podcast where I hang out in haunted places with comedians. I'm your host, Sarah Jones. So this is going to be a wrap-up episode. I'm sitting here with my producer, Randall Lawrence. Oh, hey. (laughs) There he is. And my manager, Sarah Schneider. Hello. (laughs) And we're sitting in Cranival Studios right now, and we're going to go over some of the funny emails that we've gotten over this season and also answer some frequently asked questions that we've received since we've started this show. Sweet. All right. All right. I'm in. All right. So should we start, like, by vote? By frequently asked questions or funny emails? What do you guys think? Ooh, that's a good question. What do you think, Sarah? Let's start with frequently asked questions. I'm going to do the frequently asked. Let's do it. Okay. So one question I get constantly is, do you ever get scared in a location? Okay. Yeah. People ask me this all the time. Um, You don't come across like you do. I really don't. Yeah. (laughs) I actually really love being in haunted places. It's just something that interests me and I like it okay. even when paranormal things have happened to me I just get excited that's usually my like response um, I did get afraid to go to the fake haunted house that we were invited to at the house of shadows sure because nothing screams fear like uh, uh, non-authentic non-authentic actors and right. no things no that real absolutely danger. won't hurt you <laughs> yeah uh, I was so afraid. I was texting Randy being like, I think I'm going to back out of this. And I was like trying to calm you down, which was the funniest thing because you were not having it. No. You were not. You were on that ledge and you were totally committed to jumping. Like yeah. there was no talking you down. But the thing is, is that like, so part of it was like, I can't say no because they invited me to be on this right. thing. And the other side of it was they were clearing it out so that it was just me, Amanda Arnold, and the comic I went with, and the film crew going Because you're taping, through. right. Yeah, so it was like, first of all, these actors don't have anyone else to scare. Second of all, they're on camera, so you know they're going to give it their all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the marketing director comes up to me, and she goes, I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you, sweetheart. Like, they're really going <laughs> to... They're going to go for it. Yeah, they're going to give you a hard time. And I was like, great. Well, and that's the full <laughs> contact one that you yeah. went through, too, right? right? Yeah, yeah full Which, contact. I mean, it shows on the video. They did a great job. They did. That they was really a did. killer yeah. experience. Yeah, it was... I mean, and that's just in the 10 minutes that they captured of the hour that we were in there. Oh, that was an hour. It was an hour. Wow, yeah. that's a long wow. time. Yeah, there were multiple times in there, too, that you're like, okay, we're done. We got through it. And then a clown comes out of nowhere and just grabs you, and you're just still in the game. Damn. Yeah. But you can't so. put together a feature-length film about this. <laughs> no, <so. laughs> no, no. It was really more promotion for House of Shadows and Gresham right. and for Laughing in the Dark. But it was so much fun. It, it was looks so like cool fun. of them. To Amanda do has not stopped talking about it really she has not stopped talking about yeah. it since it happened almost every time i'm with her she brings it up in some capacity i'm so glad that like she sees now why i was so afraid of it uh-huh. i mean like you know how i am anytime i do something new i'm horrified oh, of yeah, it. No, I'm and i <laughs> pester the shit out a of full randomly. contact haunted house or just stepping foot on a stage <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sure which one I was more afraid of. <laughs> and it's funny, like, I'm trying to explain to you how afraid I am. I'm like, this is worse than being on stage. And you were like, that's something you have to get used to. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, every time we have had these conversations, I eventually just have to stop and go, okay, you know what? Fine. Because there's no there is no reasoning. No. At, no. at some point, it's just like, all right, well, she's just going to be scared until she steps foot in the place. I just <laughs> yeah, got to stop. Yeah. And Otherwise, actually, she's going to get mad and fire no me. There's no fixing this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and actually, both times, like, me being on stage for the first time and me going through that full contact town of house, I think both times I texted you and was like, I'm ready to do the next time bigger and better. Yeah. Like, I'm, yeah. <laughs> like, now that I'm, you know, now that I've done it once. I, I want to see you write it. jokes and get on stage and then oh, bomb boy. horrifically and just oh, go, no. I can do better. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. That's the next. That's the next step, I guess. Uh, But yeah, but in a location, no. I usually um, something I really love about doing this is that I will sit there for hours and do research on this haunted place, and it's like homework that I assign myself. Uh But I know everything about this spot, and when I walk in there, I go, "Oh, this must be where you know the murder happened, or this must be where." And it's exciting. You like history. I do. yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. you're the history nerd doing a haunted house podcast. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And that's I think that's like a big misconception of this show is that people think like, 
oh, are you ghost hunting? And I'm like, no, I'm really not. I'm right. talking about this history. That, and I'm interested in culture. So, uh-huh. like, in every city, they have, like, their urban legends that you tell, you know, at a sleepover to your friends or, you know. I wish Dark Tourism wasn't a thing on Netflix already because you would oh my God. destroy that show. Oh, I yeah. know. Everyone, I watched all of it, and I was like, this guy is my soulmate. Like, this yeah. is what I want to do. <laughs> this awkward, wanky Australian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, but... I mean, that's basically the concept. It's yeah. that. And I also like to just laugh. So I like to take a comedian there. Sometimes they have a dark sense of humor, which is perfect. Like when you get Dan Weber out somewhere. Dan nails it <laughs> every time. Or, you know, I have someone like Becky Bronstein who's horrified the whole right. time, you know, and it's entertaining equally. You either get the, the nice, you get the dark humor episode or you get absurdist. Exactly. Like it's yeah. one of the two. Yeah. And it's great. Exactly. Or, you know, or the best is when I'm with someone who, like, doesn't believe in ghosts and is not here for it and then gets scared. Like Skeptic and cynical. Yeah. Jake Silberman was yep. a great example of that. Yep. He was like, I don't believe in this. He was like, fuck these ghost kids. Like, by the end of our episode, <laughs> was not about it. So that's, that's really fun. But to answer the question, no, I don't get scared on location. I get stoked. Yeah. That's rad. Um. So I guess that kind of ties into this next question. What were the most exciting moments this season? Um, I would say, unless, do you have any suggestions for episodes you've listened to that you thought were exciting? I really enjoyed the Becky Bronstein one. I know, I was going to say that too. Really interesting, just not with the story itself so much, but with Thank what you. actually happened when you got there. Like yeah. all of the outer things that came into play, like, you know, with the car driving by and just being weird. And then the people sitting at the end of the driveway telling you all the other stories, stuff you never could have planned for. It, known, yeah. It just really added to that episode. I think so too. That's a big part of like going out there. Cause like for that episode, we drove over an hour away. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to scope out the location. I didn't know anything about what I was getting into, but it just is organic the way it comes together and it's exciting. It worked out so well and there's no yeah. way you could have planned for all those things. It was just no. perfect timing. It was excellent. Uh, another good example of something that I could not have planned for that was awesome <coughs> was uh, Nariko Ott's episode. Yeah. So that one, um, for listeners that haven't heard that episode... I researched this haunted cabin in the woods, and from all of my research, it was supposed to be abandoned. So that was just, we're going to go check out this abandoned cabin. I can't think of a better guy to bring with me than Noriko. Like, hey, do you want to trespass in a haunted cabin in the middle of the woods? Definitely. Yes, I do. Uh, And then I did a White Pages lookup and realized... This is not an abandoned cabin. Somebody (laughs) lives here. (laughs) So his name was really unique. So I like found him on Facebook. Robert Paulson. His name is Robert Paulson. (laughs) That's not true. (laughs) (laughs) And I realized that he's a mortician. So of... That's wonderful. Right. Of all of the things that could have just not been planned, but fallen into place perfectly... That was one of them. I call him. I tell him the concept for the show. I was like, look, I've done all this research on your home. Can we come tomorrow night? Like, what are you guys doing? (laughs) (laughs) Want to hang out? Do you guys want to play some Scrabble? (laughs) Yeah. Well, actually, they were all about it. They were giving Nariko and I drinks. Like, we partied there, like, all night. It was really fun. So, yeah. I mean, that was was an exciting moment for sure. But uh, when it comes to paranormal things that have happened on the show... There have been a few subtle instances, at least this first season, that have come up. Um, The first was in Jake Silberman's episode when we're getting back in my car. He says to me, yeah, he goes, so have you ever had anything paranormal happen on the show? And I was like, I mean, no, it's episode five. Okay, (laughs) sure. And, uh, And he goes, well, you know, you're bound to. And I was like, yeah. And I went back home and I edited the audio. And right after he said that, I heard this sound that was like, ooh, like the inflection. Like a swide goes whistle? Up. Kind of. Like it was this weird. I was like, what the fuck is that? And he, Jake keeps talking and then it goes, ooh, like it comes back down. And I took just that clip and sent it to Jake. And I was like, do you know what this is? Like, is this your phone or something? And he was like, no, fuck all of that. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'm not into it. And that was like kind of the first little thing. Um, and one point in Shannon Hunt's episode, she did a mini sode with me. We were in the basement of Kelly's Olympian. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, and there was a boarded up door that looked like someone had like punched through it and it was just this creepy looking door and we're standing outside of it and we heard what sounded like a human making an animal growling sound. Oh. Yeah. Kind of like a loud gurgling gro- like growling That's sound. That's not terrifying. Yeah. Well, I thought Shannon had like a coworker down there messing with me and I busted the door open and nothing was in that room. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. So, like little things. The last one was at uh, Nunica Cemetery in Nunica, Michigan with Adam Deggy. Uh, we finished our episode. We're like um, leaving the cemetery and we both smelled the smell of smoke. And the recording is still on. So if you listen to that episode, you hear both of us realizing, do you smell that smoke? It smells like smoke. There's no smoke around us. There's no house nearby. It's the middle of the night in a cemetery. Weird. And as we're talking uh, about it, the smell completely went away. Interesting. Huh. Didn't you also have the Ouija board move on its own in Wendy's episode? Oh, yeah, that did happen. It was, we were hammered. Yeah. <laughs> we were, oh, I'm aware. I heard it. <laughs> we were very drunk. But uh, the, the, you, you open up that second half of the episode with, so... <laughs> Wine has been had. <laughs> yeah. That's how you open that episode. <laughs> We've been drinking a little. Bit. We've been imbibing a little bit. Yeah. Oh, my God. We had so much fun. Just a slumber party in a haunted hotel room. That was a great episode. Wendy's the best. I love mm-hmm. her. And didn't you have like a lot of weird noises and stuff that happened in the Fairview Training Center one, too, when you guys went down in that like basement area and oh. you were sitting down there with all the graffiti and there was like weird fans? Oh, and- yeah, that's right. I like forgot about some <laughs> like that's the thing about like the experiences that we've had. It hasn't been like any significant like we saw a ghost coming at us. Right. But there were little subtle things that, yeah, that fan was moving in the basement and Hunter and I could not figure out what the fuck was going on. Yeah, because it was like a totally enclosed room or something, right? There was no in or out wind. Oh, yeah. It was... That was really creepy. Um, And actually, in Becky Bronstein's episode, we kind of gloss over it in the episode, but while we were walking towards the cemetery, Becky saw a figure in the cemetery, but she was so afraid that I just didn't push it. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, so you saw it too? No, I didn't see it. Oh, okay. But I was basically trying to convince Becky to go through with this because she was almost wanting to back out, like pull out there. But we, she saw this figure and I just kind of clocked it in my mind and just didn't say anything until we were leaving. And you can, if you re-listen to the episode and realize what happened, you can hear her go, isn't that what people say they see here? And I just let (laughs) it go. (laughs) Yeah, so anyway. (laughs) Because she was so freaked out. Oh my God. So yeah, like, Little subtle things have happened, but nothing that's been so like insane that you know no one's gotten hurt on the show. Well, that's, by a well, that's a good yet. thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a good thing. But. She got that going for you. Yeah, absolutely. Laughing in the dark, accident free for one season. <laughs> for one full <laughs> season, we did it. Hey, go us. Um. Okay, so another question here. How do you find comedians? So, when I started the show, I can help with that answer. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, please. Well, do do yours, and then <laughs> and then and then you do yours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, when I first started, I did not know any comedians. I would go to stand up shows in Portland and bring my little notebook. Yep. And Sarah came with me to a couple of them. Okay. And I would just sit there and write down the names. And I usually was just sitting alone like a creep. And I would just write down the names of all these people I was seeing and would like rate them. And then I would go um, out back whenever people were just drinking, smoking, talking. And I would just find people and say, hey, look, I have this idea for a show. And the first person I approached was Adam Posse. Oh, sure. And he was very, very into it. And actually, Wendy was sitting there at the Uh time. And a couple other people that I haven't had on yet. Posse is like the most approachable comic in the city. Oh, yeah. He's so great. Yeah. 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 If you don't know Adam Posse, he's this uh, big Samoan dude. Is like the Your hand gestures are not inaccurate. (laughs) I just want to say that. (laughs) I I, like your wingspan out. He is the most like 
the nicest, like yeah. cuddliest I love person. Posse. Yeah, he's awesome. So he was the first person I talked to, and then I kind of talked to a couple other comics and got to know people out here. And eventually, I met Randy, my yeah. new producer. Er, uh, you you emailed uh, the network page saying that you wanted to join the network, uh, but you were you didn't want to until you wanted a producer or until you got a new producer. Yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, so. I would like to do another show. So yeah, I'll just sell myself for a second. And <laughs> it was weird. It it when I got that email first, I almost thought you were hinting at that, like you knew who I was and what I did. And you were like, I'm looking for a new producer too, kind of like a tongue in cheek, like, hey, do you want to produce my show? <laughs> uh, and then yeah, you when when you just jumped at it like that, I'm like, Oh, she just she really needs a new producer. Uh then you came over for three hours the first time. Oh yeah. 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 And we went over your show, how you wanted it formatted. I think I edited like three episodes for you oh, in the yeah. studio right we then and there. We had a bunch that we had to get Yeah, done. we did a bunch of stuff that night. Uh, it was a lot of damage control because I had some issues with Yes, you did. Yeah. yeah, you had a real, real rough start with, with that <laughs> other dude. Yeah. Yeah, we had a so, tough time. I'm glad you got away from him because he was not good. Yeah. I don't know. If you listen, dude, just like if you hate listen, like, like a lot of people do with like Howard Stern. <laughs> If you hate listening to this podcast, just know I heard the story and uh, you're garbage. And I'm glad that you don't uh, produce the show anymore. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't think he listens to the show, but uh, you never yeah, know. Good riddance. Yeah, that was a tough time. Sarah knew him. Oh, yes. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry if you liked him. No, <laughs> no, no. no. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good. yeah that, I mean, it was kind of something that just fell into my lap and. Uh, well, I think he wanted me to fall into his life. Right, yeah, it <laughs> turns out. Goal. Turns out. <laughs> yes. But, um, great. Gross. I know it's so weird to think that, like, someone in entertainment would take advantage of I, a new girl on the It block. is shocking, right? Yeah, it you is just wouldn't shocking. Think. I never would have guessed. In the, yeah. <laughs> Especially in the circle of comedy? That's nuts. No kidding. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, so yeah, the question, how do you find comedians? So that's how I started. And then now, I mean, you helped me find a couple people for the show, too. I helped you. Yeah, I helped you find a few people, um, get them on. But I, I mean, by and large, you did this by yourself, which is impressive. <laughs> Thank you. I don't yeah. know. I still don't know how you got Kanane. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, I do. We I can say how I got Kanane. <laughs> <laughs> it's Funny not a you mystery should mention that because I happen to know. <laughs> well, no, I actually <laughs> want to give credit where it's due on that because uh, Adam Posse, who we were just talking about, he was on Kyle Kanane's show, The Boogie Monster. Oh, when that's Kanane right. came here. That's yeah. Right. And he talked about my podcast the whole time. He was on Kyle Kanane's show. Huh. So, I mean, and Adam asked me for permission, and I gave him the research from our episode. We went to Lewis and Clark College, yep. and oh, he yeah. talked about that on Kyle Kinane's show with Dave Stone, the Boogie Monster. And uh, I listened to the episode, and Kinane was like, well, that's fucking awesome. That's way cooler than my dumb <laughs> shit that I'm doing or whatever, like, in classic Kinane style. So I just messaged him on Instagram and I was like, hey, dude, do you want to be on my show? And he was like, sounds rad, actually. Yeah. <laughs> was verbatim. I remember that screenshot. <laughs> yeah. I was like, sweet, let's do it. So I flew to LA and made yeah. it happen. Once you showed me that screenshot, I was like, oh, shit. This girl this means is business. Be a thing. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Yeah. This is serious. Yeah. <laughs> Glad yeah. I struck when the iron was hot. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty good at. Um, I have no boundaries when it comes to talking to people. Like, I don't care how famous you are. Like, I just don't give a shit. Yeah, you've, we've talked about this at length. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm kind of just like, what works for you? <laughs> like, I'm not really, I'm not into like begging people to do my We're show just by this. any means. Yeah. Do you want to come do my, you don't have to if you don't want to, but if you would, it would be cool. I mean, but if you don't want to, I know it's stupid. You know what? Never mind. But do you want to? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> yeah, no, um. I do have a little bit of a sheepish approach sometimes to things, especially, well, mainly, Hot houses. What's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but mainly that's like when I'm working through my ideas, I text uh -huh. Randy and bother <laughs> him with all of my fears about what I'm about to do. <laughs> so you've taken that part over. Yes, I have. Thank um, you. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> I mentioned this before we started rolling. Uh, there's a text ratio. Oh, no. Uh, it is typically, if I go back and really look, uh, 10 to 1. Oh, no. Totally accurate. Yeah. It's about Sorry. 10 to 1. <laughs> uh, which it could be up to, it, sometimes when, when 
when Sarah's really on one, 20 to one. Yes. <laughs> like if I'm not by my phone. Yeah. Just oh, goes I'm and goes sorry. and goes. And I, then three of them are asking if I'm, if, if I'm there. Yeah. Like, Hey, are you? Yep. Okay. And then more. And, okay. <laughs> just wanted to make sure you were reading these. <laughs> I, Here's a couple screenshots of the conversations. I'm yeah, having. What yeah. do you think about season two? I think I want to do animators, but I'm not sure who. Also, that episode's going to be up in about 20 minutes. I know it's 1130 at night. And I'm really sorry. And, but, and, yeah, but, you know, <laughs> it's going to be good. We're almost there. We're almost done. The end's in sight. Home stretch. Yeah, I say that a lot. Yep. Home stretch. <laughs> well, I mean, it's hard to do all this by myself. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. That's why I never, I, 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 I can't hide that sometimes it's frustrating. Yeah. Uh, but I know that uh, it's, it's making the show better. Yeah. So. I, I mean. You being able to express your ideas openly and have a soundboard is Yeah, is I good. need yeah. to like run it by some people sometimes because I'm alone in my room. And then likewise, like I work almost full time at Kaiser. I go right. to school part time at PSU. And then this show is more than full time. This is constant oh, yeah. research, is. booking, editing, all kinds of stuff that I'm just and then when I get new ideas for things. I all I have is to text you guys or text Cooper or uh, Nick, my screen printer, and be like, "Hey, what do you guys think about this? What do you think about that?" Yeah. And uh, I mean, for right now, it's a ragtag group of you know. What oh do yeah. You guys think. I mean, we're we're consultants in this whole thing. <laughs> yeah, and yeah it's definitely. Part of the process, you know. Yeah. When you when you look at anything creative, like if when you look at a TV show, it's not done by one person. No. You know, yeah. ideas are not. You don't have one dude who goes in and writes a script and gives it to to the uh to the the crew the cast and crew and just says do it you know there's a yeah. ton of people involved in that it's the same thing with the show yeah and that's been kind of and i think like for future seasons it'll be more like i need to get like a more dedicated team of like so that it's not so much pressure on you guys to be like okay this is what everyone's doing and it's like a fair distribution of what makes sense but well i mean you're not giving anybody extra work okay. all you're doing is bugging the just, shit out well, of them. you're just bouncing ideas off <laughs> and yeah sometimes at yeah 11 30 at night yeah it could be a little bothersome Sorry. but it's okay yeah um it's not an indictment against your character <laughs> okay just your personality yeah well i get that all the time i'm used to that yeah no no problem um so i've got a few more questions on here that i already had uh, do we want to answer them, or do we want to go through some of the funny emails? I can go ahead and go through some of the funny emails. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's. Uh... So, if you wrote in about a minisode this season, you were actually emailing me, Sarah with an H, oh. versus Sarah without the H, Sarah Jones. We it didn't probably mean that gets to be kind so of confusing. confusing yeah. but... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Either way, that's me that you were talking to, and. I reach out to pretty much everybody that sends an email in. I reach back out to them for the most part, but there's definitely a few I didn't reach back out to. And that would include our friend Harold, who messaged us not once, not twice, but three different times. <laughs> oh, I remember this guy. <laughs> and not from the same posting, because a lot of my posts, you'll find me on Craigslist looking for just anybody that wants to talk to us. He replied from multiple cities, he replied once from Memphis, once from New Orleans, and then once from Las Vegas, saying uh -huh. things such as, no such thing as ghost, superstition, out-of-body experiences, or UFOs. Nope. Zilch. All mind games. Mind games. Mind games. You're just Fun. messing with my mind. This then, guy sounds like a conspiracy theorist who doesn't believe in any conspiracies. Right. Nothing's real, but everything's fake, too. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, he's got a lot of time on his hands because he also says no such thing as ghost UFOs, black cats crossing the street, walking under ladders, etc. Have you ever seen any black cats crossing the street? I have seen many black cats. I know what? I haven't. I've walked under ladders. I don't believe in ladders. Why? Okay. Memphis, Vegas and New Orleans. Why is he following you? I don't know. What does he want <laughs> from me? He is. He is. <laughs> Going city to city and following us around on yeah, Craigslist. Yeah, he loves us. He just Why doesn't want to he admit doing it. He hate that. loves us. Yes. Maybe he, he hate, hate listens. listens. Yeah. <laughs> There's our hate listener. There it is. We knew you there found was your hate one. Harold? Keep listening. Harold, we love you. Let's get you we on a mini sode. 
<laughs> let's get you on a mini sound and talk about how you think this is all horseshit. Yeah, let's talk about all the specific instances that you don't believe in. Right. I'd love to hear about them. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Email me, Harold. <laughs> you know he will. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't let up got yet. Coming. He's got a track record. <laughs> he does. Um, another interesting story I got came out of Chicago. He says, I have many ghost stories, but the thing is, my stories are real. Okay. Oh, and it comes with twist. an attachment, which is not rare. A lot of people will write it out kind of in story form oh, sure. oh, okay. and then uh-huh. attach it. Oh, and like in a Word document or yeah, something? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So mm-hmm. it just tells just the whole story and I'll yeah, read yeah. through it and pass it on. Well, this attachment was not a Word document. It was a photo. Oh, of no. his dick? No, of poop. Okay. <laughs> Literally poop in a toilet. I don't know if he took the shit. I don't know if it was an internet shit. It's a mystery. But it was there. But he had true ghost stories. Ghost shit. Oh, the ghost shit. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Oh, really? He got ghost shit on tape. Oh. I mean, huh. that guy could have had something. He could have. I didn't email him back. <laughs> I didn't I didn't feel like I needed to know any more about the ghost hey, shit. Thank you so much for filtering through the shit in our email. <laughs> Quite literally. Dear listeners, Anytime. if you send pictures of, of shit or dicks... There's a good chance you're not going to get pushed through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, don't send dicks. Yeah. I actually haven't gotten a single dick pic yet. Okay. I, hey, knock on wood. I am very happy about that. Season one. I'll consider that a win. Season one, no dick pics. Check. All right. <laughs> Add That's that an to accolade. our, our we can safety put that, thing there. We can put that on like the, the accolades when you market season two. <laughs> Only podcast to never receive a dick pic. <laughs> is the, have Only any confirmed. of the other podcasts you work on received dick pics no. yet? No. Oh. But this is the only one I'm willing to confirm. <laughs> good <laughs> we've talked plenty about dicks in the other podcast That's, I do yeah. so. so you're like, kind of asking for it in the yeah, other right. <laughs> speaking of dicks this one I didn't get a dick pic but I was asked after going through and confirming when we were going to talk scheduling the whole thing he says I'm curious what's in it for me oh yeah I, I don't remember need this movie too. tickets I do minimal gambling and I'm too old for girlfriends I don't have access to your on-air broadcasts, and I'm sure you don't pay AFTRA or equity wages. Till then, have some nice days. Just some, not too many. Huh. Wait, isn't that someone that, didn't you respond to him and he had a story and then he said, well, what's in it for me? Yeah, we had the whole thing like ready to go. He, had he a, sent Did me a, he have a good story? Yeah, he sent me a story and it was something about a family experience where like a family member had died and so he went back to visit some estranged family member that had to do with that and there was a bunch of weird incidences. Uh-huh. Incidences. Uh-huh. And yeah, so I thought it would be legit. I was ready to schedule him. We talked times. We were narrowing it down. What? And it was down to the last one where he's like, okay, you know, I can do this day or this day. But what's in it for me? He's too old for girlfriends. Yeah, I mean, I guess I have nothing to offer if he's too old for girlfriends. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, so now what? <laughs> wow. Yeah, and he never wrote back. And I replied and I explained, you know. We don't. We don't pay people. This is just kind of a fun experience. You know, you replied to us. You said yeah. you wanted to share your story. We would love to hear it. We're interested in what you have to say, but no, we don't pay. No. Silence. Woof. Yeah, sorry, dude. I mean, I considered sending you movie Way tickets, to but bury not now. the lead on that, too. Like, just... Wait until it's organized to drop yeah, that yeah. bomb. Like, hey, I got a story. Do you guys pay? No? Cool. Well, and also, like, and even, like, suggesting things that he's, like, not going to accept. Like, I won't accept movie tickets. I won't, <laughs> won't accept, accept movie tickets. Gambling. Yeah. He's like, okay, no movie tickets, no sex. What else you got? Right. And like, I don't gamble. Oh, and no gamble. I don't gamble. Sure. Okay. So no scratchers, I guess. Uh, yeah, right. And then, I mean, his story, I would imagine if he wants so much for it, and, and, and also, like, saying to you, you better be creative because I won't accept any of this shit. Yeah, it like, wasn't that good. It has to be. Yeah, I was going to say, no. this should be an amazing story no. if you're expecting so you, much for it. Does he want, like, a craft made from Pinterest? Like, what? what's his end game? <laughs> I don't know. I think he just wanted money, is what it sounds like to me. Probably, yeah. But, yeah, maybe I could have been more creative and offered him a Pinterest Absolutely interest. not. We will not be bullied into accepting your story for a mini That you are asking to tell. Right. That but you have responded have to us. I could have got some more interesting dialogue out of that, no, maybe, I if I'd have been we, a little I more mean, creative. Based on like the, the gist of the story that you remember, yeah. I think we got a lot better mini Oh, we definitely did. Season. He was not on my front burner by yeah, any means. Yeah, we got some really good mini this season. We really set the bar for season two. We did. I'm hoping 
that we can find just as many excellent stories. Yeah. I'm sure we will. If you have a story, send me an email, please. Yeah, absolutely. If you have a great ghost story, definitely send an email to uh, litdarkpodcast at gmail.com. Sarah with an H will read your story and we'll decide uh, if you made the cut and we'll schedule you. Most likely you'll make the cut. Mm, well, <laughs> just don't send, me, don't send me. Don't send me. Based on all these emails we have saved up. So here's, here's how you make the cut. Uh, don't send poop. Mm-hmm. Um, Probably don't send dicks. It's just rude in general. Basic guidelines, yes. yeah. Uh, don't harass people about paranormal stuff or whatever Harold was doing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and don't wait until the last second to ask for money. Yeah. Or, or just don't, don't ask, ask for, for money. money. Don't ask yeah. for money. We don't have any. No. We're not like, going to pay you. Yeah. We, we just don't have any money at all. No, I really have no love to spare either, so it's <laughs> not going right. anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Um, And let's see, I have another one, which I actually got from a female out of Philadelphia. Okay. And she, yeah, and she, you know, she wrote like a really significant email. You guys can see it. Like, wow. Yeah. It's a long paragraph. That's a page. And everything. Yeah. That's yeah. almost a full page. I was yeah. like, ooh, this is going to be a great story. Oh my God. I'm so excited. Yeah. And so I start reading it. She wants to share her story, even though she's not completely sure it will count for what we're looking for and she goes Uh-oh. on to explain you know where she grew up and she grew up irish catholic went to a catholic school so she was surrounded by all of catholicism's mysteries and superstitions she was immune to them but her friends definitely weren't Ooh. and she goes on to explain throughout school how she tricked her friends into thinking that things were haunted like she was the one moving the paddle on the ouija board Oh. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah. She goes into detail about all the different things she did to her friends. To fuck with them. To fuck with them. And then kind talks funny. about how she doesn't believe in any of it. It's kind of funny. Not not right for this podcast, but no, it's kind exactly. Of funny. It's totally not what we were looking for. Right. Yeah. If you'd like to hear more, please let me know. <laughs> Thank no. you for being an ass. And yeah. I, I was, that you, has nothing to do with what we're doing here. As someone yeah. who likes a good prank. Good job. Yes. But, Wrong, wrong time, wrong place. Yeah. yeah, you were correct in your opening statement. This may not be what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, it is definitely not. Didn't contact her back either. No, bummer. It's so okay. it looks like how many more do you have? Two more right there. Three more. Gosh, I've got three more. Um, I'll just go over them quickly. I have no, no, yeah, one from a guy in San Francisco who told me a story that he read out of a book. Oh, okay. And he opens with that. He The stories he relates come from a book from an emergency room doctor, which I read. Oh. And then he goes on to tell me about what he read in the book. Okay. Like, well, well, that's so not really report. your story. Yeah. yeah. Cool. A very short book report. I think he probably failed that book report. Okay. <laughs> he tried. He tried. Um, oh, and then there was Dan from Illinois. People think that he is a hybrid alien. Oh, what? We should have booked this guy. I did write him back. Oh. I was like, what? Yeah. He says he can really do telekinesis. I wrote him back and told him we wanted him on the show. He never answered me. I emailed him again. can I see this email? Yeah. He's dead. He's dead. He finally revealed his powers and the government got him. That's got to be it. Um. Oh, my God. Can I just read what he says? Go ahead. He says, people think I'm a hybrid alien. I'm just exaggerating in this video with the Facebook editing, which he apparently linked you to. Yep. <clears throat> but I can really do telekinesis. Companies hire me as well as individual and security companies to do this one paranormal thing called remote viewing. This is my Facebook page. It shows a bunch of stuff about meditation, telekinesis, spoon bending, energy, <laughs> spiritual <laughs> healing, spiritual medium work, all the other bizarre shit you might like. Oh my god, I love him. Dan. I know. <laughs> I watched a documentary two days ago on a dude who goes around debunking all of that stuff. So I'm going through all of that in my head right now yeah. as you read that. And I'm like, oh, it'd be so much fun to have him on and just be like, so the spoon bending thing, um, you know, you're not really doing that, right? It, so d- does he bend it himself? Like, how does that work? Yeah, they, they it's sleight of hand. Oh. All of that stuff is sleight of hand. Yeah. You to switch even make out. it look like it bent? Yep. That's all sleight of hand. Is it like shaking it really fast? Well, uh, no, it's just, it's it's clever movement with the spoon that you can swap out with one hand if you're trained. 
oh, well enough. Weird. Yeah, it's it's all just really, really, really fast hands. Yeah, it's but all the telekinesis. Work. The video he sent me was very heavily edited, fa- edited Facebook video, and it was him sitting at a table with like some weird music, and he's making some faces at the cup on the table, and it's just kind of rolling back and forth. But there's no. <laughs> No, in, like actual telekinesis. Yeah, involved. Like, you know that he's got the table underneath and he's moving it, and it's just out of camera. Sight, yeah, definitely. But I still, I reached out to him once and then never heard back. So I reached out to him again, and I was like, "Hey, we're still interested in having you. Get back to us and let us know when you're available." Still nothing. No, Not what a, a bummer. Peep back. I was so sad because even though that's a little different than what we normally do, I thought it would be very interesting. Absolutely. I at least wanted to hear the story about how he was a hybrid alien. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's it's not a ghost, but you know, it's still creepy. Well, yeah, and like we'll that's the other that. thing that sometimes people are like, "Well, will you take a story about like a demon possession?" And I'm like, "Absolutely, uh, yes, of course I will." Definitely. <laughs> like, please. It's technically not ghosts. I'm like, "No, I want to hear about it. I want to hear all about yes. it." Right. I want to hear the details. If you've been possessed by a demon or know somebody who has Please email us, litdarkpodcast at gmail.com. We want you on season two. I'll push you right through. Yeah, you'll go. Sarah will accept it. We will yes. call you immediately. Yes. Sarah will, there, she will have just put a needle in someone's arm and will step away from that needle to record you. If anyone doesn't get that joke, I'm a phlebotomist. At- <laughs> I will be drawing someone's blood. And we'll literally remove the needle. I will leave the needle in and call you with my phone on my shoulder. Yep. I need to know all about this immediately. Right. I'll put you on speaker. My patient will love it. Yep. Tell us your this story. This is going to be great. This is amazing. While someone's getting screened for STDs because they had a rough night. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's going to be there talking to your possessed ass. Uh-huh. Yeah. And your my patient's going to be worse. so grateful. Yeah. That's how we thrive. I probably shouldn't have said <laughs> Um, so, okay, is this, we have one more? Yes, I have one more. And this one actually went on for a little while. Okay. I mean, he opened very vaguely. Ghosts, hmm, do things to me, which, hmm, is kind of weird. Okay. Ooh. So, you know, I replied back with my typical, hey, thanks for your interest. You know, I explained what we do and what we're looking for. And can you tell me a little bit more about your story? Hmm. You know, what kind of things do these ghosts do to you? Love and then it. he goes on for a little story about back in 1999, there was a two-story house and one night where he slept and he slept in the raw. Yeah. Okay. He felt something touching his part. Yes. I thought it was my wife. So I let it go on. Uh, yes. I climaxed quickly. <laughs> wow. I looked down and nobody was there. So I jumped up. Oh. Seeing the door was closed and there's no one in the room. After a few times, the ghost got more, hmm, daring? Yeah. And, well, was a very nice feeling. It only happened at night and at 2.30 p.m., West Coast time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, night. It's very specific. Very night time. <laughs> but this went on for a year. What? And then we moved. Buddy, that's called a wet dream. <laughs> No, that's amazing. Yeah, so I was kind of like, all right, this guy's probably just a creepy weirdo, but... Love it. If he wants to tell no, his story... Is this the guy that you texted me and said, this guy basically got raped by a ghost? Yes. Do you want this one? And I was like, <laughs> yes. Because I was I was talking to this guy, and I'm like, this guy's a creep. We don't want him. Okay. And then we were texting back and forth about a joke. I think it was with Noriko, maybe. Yeah. About ghost rape. And I go, wait, what? And you told me about it, and I was like, well, I have this guy, funny you mention, and you were like, oh my god, yes, I want that. Yes. And I was like, well, I think he's just a creeper, but you know, okay. And so that's what led to all this dialogue back I and forth. I have a question for this man. I know you guys can't answer this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, this happened for a year? A year. At and night, at 2.30. After- a year of his life. So, right. And he mentions that the first time he thought it was his wife, so he let it go on. And once he came, that's when he jumped up and saw the door closed and everything. And that there was no one there, yeah. And then he just continues to just be like, all right, guess I'm just going to get a ghost beach every night. It, I mean, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm not, I'm not questioning his It was his a actions. very nice feeling, though. <laughs> <laughs> Who can say no to a Who very nice no feeling? Who can say no to a wispy H- HJ? So wait, um, did he actually say anything beyond that? 
Well, yeah, I wrote him back. You know, he told me, you know, that they moved and that's when it ended. And I wrote back and I was like, wow, that's definitely creepy. And Sarah would love to talk to you about this. Yeah. Let's get you scheduled. We have some openings this week, you know, the weekend. I gave him the dates and I said, hey, just let me let me know what works for you. We'll get you on. And he writes back. Well, that was not the creepy part. Oh, what creeps me out is my liquid release was taken by the spirit. I've never had a mess. Huh. I've debated over and over. Was it a ghost presence by someone not from this planet? Still wonder. Listeners, my jaw <laughs> is dropped. Yes, yes, it is. Like, it is. Uh, you want to talk to this guy so bad. Yeah, I yes. do. I really do. And, and so, so I wrote back. Yeah. That would make me wonder, too. Are you interested in telling Sarah about this? She would love to hear about it. Please let me know when you're interested. Anytime. Nothing. Never wrote back. That was the end of it. You know what? When you told me, because all Sarah did, um, again, for listeners, I don't know the story when I do, when I record the minisodes. Sarah knows the story. So you're calling them blind. I call them yeah. blind. I did not know that. Yeah. I okay. don't know. Because I think part of the experience is that I want my genuine reaction to be caught on right, the right. microphone. So... I don't know the story. Sometimes people get confused because we have the same first name. Yeah. She's Sarah with an H. I'm Sarah without an H. Um, but, I mean, we might have to switch up. We might have to call you by your nickname, Star. <laughs> yeah. For it. Maybe, maybe that would make things a little easier. Um, yeah, but, you have Sarah Star Productions. <laughs> there hey, you there go. You go. Yeah. We can make this work. We can make it work. I, I do try to very very much specify Sarah Jones will be calling you and right. then I sign this it you Sarah know Schneider. Sarah S manager of yeah so that th- I was hoping that they would read that and know the difference but well, as with remember, most emails you skim them and you only retain the very important bits and that's right. probably not the most important yeah well and then <laughs> so like what I get from from Sarah my manager is I will get a name like a first name a phone number a date and time she knows my schedule with school and work She gives me my date and time, name and phone number, and I put it on my calendar. I sit down and I call that person. All I know is your first name. That's it. I don't know anything about your story. I don't know anything. Like sometimes people will say like, do you want me to include both of them or just the one? And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) I haven't read the email. I don't know. So, um, but with this one, this is the only one Sarah actually gave me detail when she goes, this guy was raped by a ghost. Do you want do you want to hear about this? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. And then I messaged Noriko and I was like, you won't believe what happened. And Noriko <laughs> ah, and I were both thrilled about this and we never got it. But my last mini so that came out was a guy who had a similar experience in a really? motel room. Yes. Oh, yeah. I remember that guy. Uh, yes. Uh, his name was. Fuck. I don't remember what his I name was. That is either. an excellent name. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Gosh, I feel like it was He like was hilarious. Steve or I loved it. Was it Dave? Maybe. Because I, I remember taking his message because his yeah. was similar, not in the creepiness of this one. No, but he was really It was funny very about short it. at first. And I remember when I got it, yes. I was kind of like, hmm, I don't know if this is going to pan out. But I wrote him back and eventually he gave me a little more. And I was like, okay, we this can work with gonna this. This is going to happen. Yeah. It, yeah. His mini set is called Hidden, uh, Hidden Hands Beneath. Beneath the sheets, I yep. think that's what I call yes, it. I remember that right. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His so I ultimately got it and I told Noriko about it and he was thrilled. But um but yeah, so that that's exciting. If you have a story like this, don't be shy. I will call you you will be comfortable. I don't know your story. You get to tell the whole story brand new and to someone who's never heard it. And uh it'll be really fun. So we actually just got a question on uh oh, the Instagram. Ooh. Yeah, uh, da, da, da. this says, I'm curious if you've ever had a moment on one of your shows where you got so freaked out that you, that you second guessed continuing the episode. Um, so actually, this is one that I do get multiple times too. And I think uh, the only time... I, I've never stopped an episode. I always go in not knowing what to expect, especially if it's something that I've done episodes in Seattle. I've done episodes in Michigan, in Los Angeles. I'm not able to go to the site to plan it. And so a lot of times something comes up. So, for example, like Tess Barker and I, we went to the Devil's Gate Dam in Pasadena, California. 
And we literally were hiking for over an hour oh. in the middle of the night wow. in a no trespassing area. <laughs> and she was just all about it. Oh, yeah. She loves hiking. So her and I were both. And I, I'm an active person. I love right. doing that stuff, too. So, I mean, it was really fun. But we couldn't find it. And uh, ultimately, we found a local who showed us where the Devil's Gate Dam normally is. And it was actually covered by sediment. Oh, so weird. that's why, because of they've had a lot of like rainfall issues or something. So basically, <sighs> there's been times where we're like, this is not what I expected. Yeah. But we're going to just roll with it and, and kind of go along with it. The Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery, of course, was one where um, we were kind of freaked out. But you can even hear in that one us kind of negotiating. Well, how are we going to do this episode? What are we going to do? And we it's kind of an adventure where we figure it out as we go. And then there's been a couple episodes where um, I didn't anticipate the graveyard to be blocked off. Like we couldn't actually get into the cemetery. Yeah. And like, mind you, I always try to find a way around it. <laughs> like, of I still, you know, in As those instances, you couldn't. Yeah. Uh, and then we kind of just roll with it and have to kind of go along with it. But no, nothing has happened that has freaked me out enough to say, okay, that's it. We're calling it. We're done. I've never gotten arrested. Knock on wood. Uh, but I'm kind of game for whatever, like when, like the growling happens or the strange smells or voices happen, I get excited. And I think you can hear it even in the audio where I'm usually with the, uh, comic and I'm just laughing, yeah. but I also laugh when I'm nervous. Uh -huh. So if you watch that video at the house of shadows, I'm totally freaked out, but I am giggling the whole time. Cause like, that's how I respond my body has like the worst mechanism to deal with fear. It's like, just giggle. Like if I'm ever accosted and like burglarized, it's just gonna, gonna say really that. upset yeah. someone. Cause if I'll you be get like, assaulted, what are you doing? it's gonna be weird. It'll be, yeah, it'll, no one will know what to do. Uh, yeah, so good question. Um, so I guess I'll look at some of the other questions that we that we had as well while we're, while we're at it. Um, so this one, how did you come up with this idea? This happens a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, that I get this question. So basically, um, I had a really difficult year last year, and I had a lot of things kind of happen at once, and I had to stop and reevaluate the life that I was living and really start thinking, what do I want to get out of this? out of my time here what do like what do I enjoy and what do I want to do and I basically decided well I really want to travel I'm interested in traveling and um, I'm interested in checking out other cultures like I don't just want to travel and go to a resort where you might as well just be in fucking Miami right, right, right. or something I want to check out the culture and what am I interested in when it comes to culture I'm interested in haunted history uh, and this kind of happened over the course of a week. I was already kind of thinking about doing a podcast. I wanted to do something with comedy because that's kind of like where I'm more geared towards. And Sarah, my manager, and uh, her boyfriend, Vince, and I, we I, I invited them to come with me to a ghost convention in Portland. Which sounded uh, so cool. It sounded so cool. I was totally down for this. <clears throat> yeah, and I'm that one The way the story friend. is going tells me that the ghost convention was not as cool as Well, it was, it was actually sold out. Oh. Yes. It was so cool we couldn't get in. It was oh, way shit. too cool was yeah. the problem. And so we went and got drinks and we were sitting there talking and I had already been kind of like kicking around this idea of the podcast. And then I was like, oh my God, I should do something with ghosts. Like, this has always been my shit. Like, I'm always into this stuff. Ghosts and comedy. It's like a match made in heaven. We can make this work. Yeah, we can do it. And actually, uh, it was Vince who came up with the title, Laughing in the Dark. And, it's a great uh, name. It's a great name. And then uh, as, like, we kept chewing on the idea, I started thinking, oh, my God, Laughing in the Dark can be shorted, like shortened down to Lit Dark, L-I-T. And that kind of is like a contrast there. And that's kind of right. cool. And we're bringing comedy into dark spaces. So mm -hmm. it's light and dark. And this is perfect how this, this is working this works out. works out really well. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where the idea originated. And that's where it started. Um, we never imagined it would go as far no. as it did. <laughs> or that it would be this much work. Oh, my God. That's yeah. a tremendous amount of work. Yeah. We knew it would be knew. hard, but... 
No. It takes a lot of time. Oh my and God. A lot yeah. of behind the scenes. A lot of work. And that's one of the things I think a lot of people don't understand about it. They're like, yeah. Um, so along with that, I often get the question, how can I get on laughing in the dark? <laughs> This is not my favorite question. Because you can't. <laughs> but I'm funny. Because you can't. I'm so funny. I don't care. No. Oh, I It love takes it. at least four years. I'm so, hilarious, though. Yes. My friends just think that I'm the one. funniest. Yep. It, it's that one where I, I'm a comedian. Oh, really? What do you do? Well, I've always made my family laugh. You're not a comedian. No. That's not That's not how it is. <laughs> it's actually an art form and a craft. May I field this one because it makes me angry? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Please do. You need to get booked on regular showcases in order to come on the show. Yeah. If you are not on stage at a show where someone has booked you, not an open mic, but where someone has booked you for at least a couple years, you cannot get on this show. If you want to do a mini sode, that is a different story. Exactly. You cannot come on the show unless you have had years on stage. And it's not because we're being like elitist or anything like that. You it's need really, to be a comedian. It's it's one of it's out of respect for the craft of comedy. Yeah. Like, a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people seem to think comedy is kind of just like happy fun times all the time. They don't realize oh. that it's an art form and oh there's a craft that goes into it. Yeah. So I, we don't mean to say that to be like, you're not good enough to be on Laughing in the Dark. You're it's not, not cool that. enough. Yeah, I mean, it's totally but, not that. Yeah. It is that, though. Yeah. You're not good enough to be on Laughing in the Dark if you're not a comedian, because yeah, the point is to be a comic. It's, it's exactly. It sucks. It's out of like, that's, for the craft. It's, yeah. it's the brutal truth, is that you're not good enough because you're not a comic. I'm sorry, but if you want to be a comic and you want to, if, if you really want to be on Laughing in the Dark that bad, <laughs> start hitting up open mics sure. and be funny. Yeah. Yeah, and fall on your face a couple times. That doesn't mean you're not funny. That right. means you're honing your craft. Yeah. And that's fine. Every comic that you know has fallen on their face countless times. Countless times. Countless yeah. times. Um, so that's, a, and then that brings it back to, yeah, the minisodes are open to everyone. You don't have to be a comedian to do a minisode because that's the, conversely, that's the other question I get a lot of you times. You can be too. a hybrid alien. You yeah. could. In fact, we prefer it if you're a hybrid alien. <laughs> uh, but if you're not, and you're not even funny, we'll we don't care you if you have a ghost story <laughs> or another paranormal supernatural story that's intriguing that you want to share on a podcast. We would love to hear from you. Absolutely right. email us in. But uh, yeah, to be on the show, it doesn't matter if you're my family member, love you guys, or a close friend of mine, I love you guys too, but I'm doing this with comics. That's kind of the point of the show. Sarah yeah. takes up a, 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 a... Let me finish this before you think that I'm insulting you, because I'm not. Great. <laughs> Sarah takes up a lot of my time with communication, because I'm her producer, and that's what she pays me to do, and I cannot get on this show. <laughs> yeah. All right? So... I suffer right now. Right. And what... Unless you're in my studio, <laughs> I can't be on your show, which is fine because that's not my role. Yeah. And everybody has to know. That's just, you know, if you're not a comic, it's not your role. Know yeah. your role. If, if, exactly. Know your role. And if you want to be funny and you want to be on the show, get on the mini set and try and make Sarah laugh. And if it sucks, then, you know. You know you can't be on the show. <laughs> but you can be on a mini That's right. <laughs> Glad we got that covered. Uh, Sorry, clear. I hijacked that one. Uh, so this, now that we've aggressively attacked the people that want to be on our show, <laughs> I think it's the perfect time to answer this very supportive question. Uh, and that came, say, I know I can buy merch on your website, which is great, but how can I support your show for free? Huh. That is a really awesome question to get, and I really appreciate it because, um, honestly, you might think that if you don't have any money, you can't contribute to the show. That's totally not true. If you subscribe to the show, if you give us five-star ratings, if you share the show yeah. on Facebook, on social media, Instagram, tell your friends about it, you might think, like, oh, I don't, not that many people see it, but they might. And, honestly, if you want to support us, that's a great way to do it. Yeah. It's totally free and it gets the word out and that means the world to us the best way to promote anything that is this size is word of mouth Definitely. absolutely so the most yeah. important thing you can do for free is spread the word yeah Tell your and friends. that we is more valuable than buying any as you can buy a thousand shirts from sarah but if you get a hundred people to listen that's way more valuable Definitely. absolutely yeah and we appreciate it immensely and honestly just the fact that you listen to the show 
we appreciate it. Every yeah. time I meet someone who already knows about the show and like can mention things from episodes to me, it blows my mind yep. every single time. And I honestly, I feel like it's like so gimmicky to say, but I really appreciate you guys so much because it's so validating to have this dream and to just work my fucking ass off and put a product out there and then meet strangers that appreciate it. That is the craziest feeling in the world. And I have documented proof that she actually feels that way. <laughs> yeah, he has a lot of documented proof that I do feel that way. Yeah, yep. I basically, because I'm literally like incredulous. Anytime I meet someone who's a fan of the show, I'm like, what? How did you hear about it? Right. Like, and then I I've text had Randy and Sarah. Conversations out. with Sarah. <laughs> I'm just. Can you believe this? And I have like, a fan. Yeah. yeah, that's the point. That's, that's I think you have more than one. Yeah. I, and I mean, it blows my mind every single time. I I do really honestly appreciate it. And oh, you know what? I just got this from one of my best friends. Texted me. Uh, I think two weeks ago and she said hey her words exactly were I'm balls deep in your podcast (laughs) and I am absolutely loving it fuck you for wasting so much of my time I can't stop listening to your show (laughs) and I was actually out at um, Evil Dead Live in Portland which was rad oh killer yeah and I didn't have a lot of time and I texted her back thank you so much for listening with two exclamation points (laughs) and she's like don't thank you for listening me but like the funny thing like what I want to say is like at the end of every episode when I go and thank you so much for listening that's how much I mean it I'm texting my best friend saying the same (laughs) thing like I really appreciate there's not a lot you can say past that no you know like I, I had I had someone approach me I uh, when I was doing Caitlin Warehouse's Going Away show, yeah, and he approached me. He's like, "Hey, are you Randy?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he goes, "I recognize your voice from What's More Metal." By the way, I'm standing next to Dan, who is not being acknowledged at all, <laughs> even though it's his show. Dan is the host of yeah, right. And you know, it's that's why we do it. We want to entertain people. We want to make people happy. And there's just there's not a lot that people that we can say more than thank you very much for your support please keep sharing it yeah. means the world to us you know? absolutely so please keep sharing it means the world to us thank you yeah <laughs> thank you guys so much i think uh we pretty much covered all the questions have you heard any questions that we haven't answered yet or no i haven't gotten any recently yeah and you haven't had any questions about the show not in particular none that uh none that weren't recording yeah Not in a bad way. They're just like, who's Sarah? What's the show about? Yeah. If you're listening to the show, you know both of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, hopefully. (laughs) Unless this is the first time you're listening. Right. In which case, weird place to jump in. Yeah. (laughs) Welcome. (laughs) Oh, and you know what? We we should say happy Halloween. Yeah. To all of you listeners. We're recording right now from the past, but um, (laughs) for listeners that are listening on the release date, this is my favorite day of the year, obviously. So I hope you're having a very, very happy Halloween. And go see Halloween. Yeah, go Definitely. see Halloween. I'm seeing it tonight. Halloween. I'm really excited. You are? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But who's the director? Good question. Yeah. This is great podcasting material. Absolutely. Uh, I can tell you it stars Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> oh, I know. I saw, yeah. And that's... the and the original, uh, Michael, Michael Myers, Myers or The yeah. Shape, Nick Castle. Um, and it is writ- co-written by Danny McBride. Wow. Which, if you know who Danny McBride is, he's in a ton of comedies, including This Is The End. Uh, he's a very funny dude who I wouldn't expect to yeah, co-write, co-write Halloween. Well. It is directed by David Gordon Green, okay, uh, who also did... No movies that I'm familiar with. So well, because right. I loved um, Rob Zombie's take on oh Halloween. My God, oh my so god, good. it was so good. I oh, haven't seen it in so long. I have to rewatch it. You got to watch the director's go. cut because it's yes. brutal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, god, I god, I love Rob Zombie movie. so much. I expect it to be. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it's really yeah. quite a thing. Okay, yeah. so this dude directed Pineapple Express and Your Highness. That's so interesting. he's I've he's never in seen with Your Bride. But what an interesting. So it's comedians that are working on halloween comedians often have a lot of that creative spark because Mm -hmm. they're coming up with a bunch of premises for jokes and whatnot so stories are not there's always a dark dark oh yeah there's a ton of dark um tinges 
So yeah, that and is it going to be basically a, a reboot of the original? Like there? No, actually, it is a direct sequel to the first one. So okay. this one was written in mind, or this one was written with the intention of erasing every single Halloween movie that has happened after the original. I see. So okay. it's directly after this first one the that this one. takes place. I've heard it's absolutely amazing. I have too. It's gotten great reviews. I'm super excited to go see it. Actually, John, my partner downstairs, had never seen it. And I knew that we were going to see it today. I'm like, all right, well, you're not, we're watching this right now. Yeah. Because you can't see this without seeing the You need to have the frustration of being like, no, Jamie, what are you doing? Right. (laughs) Stop (laughs) dropping the knife. Yeah. Stop putting the knife down. Good idea. Jump in the closet. That's a genius place to hide. Open the, oh, she had, she was mindful enough to open the patio doors and then hide in the closet. What was her plan past that? (laughs) Yeah. It's amazing she survived. She right? does survive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, does. spoiler alert. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That's going to be amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Are you guys doing something fun for Halloween? We don't have any plans quite yet. Not yet. Wow. Oh, yeah, no. Might right, do cool. a par- the problem is, so my good friend throws a party every year for Halloween, and uh, that is the same Saturday as the Hollywood's uh, All Night Horror Movie Marathon. Ooh. Which I make a point to go to every year. It's I my third go. year in a row. That's uh, like sold fun. out. Sorry. Oh. Actually, maybe. Really? Oh. Maybe. Yeah. I might have one extra ticket. It's on the twenty seventh, and it starts at nine p.m. and goes to five a.m. Okay. Let me. Uh, I. That's the day after. Welcome to shoot. laughing in the schedule. Laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing a photo shoot. The on podcast that day, where so I Sarah and I <laughs> schedule. <laughs> Hangout is, times after. I'm just after. trying to save you some text messages later. <laughs> <laughs> cut down on that ratio. <laughs> yeah, let's cut that down. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, great. I guess we, I mean, we can probably just wrap it up. Yeah. So I just want to say to both of you and to Jonathan Cooper, my graphic designer, if you're listening, I mean, I fucking hope you are. He is. <laughs> Honestly. Piece of shit. You <laughs> yeah, better asshole. be. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know he listens. So to Jonathan Cooper, uh, to Nick Wilson, my screen printer, to all of you guys, thank you so much for all of your help, Absolutely. season one. This has been so crazy and so fun and just such an unexpected roller coaster ride yeah. from day yeah, one. Definitely. So much fun. Yeah. Uh, it's been great. Season two is going to be nuts it's gonna be nuts yeah i'm i'm really looking forward to putting together season two i think what we have as an advantage for season two is we know a little bit more what to expect right we know what we can fine tune and uh we have a lot of really awesome people that are interested in working with me for season two so cool. yay that's exciting bigger and better bigger it's and be better great. yeah Okay, so happy Halloween. Thank you so much for listening to Laughing in the Dark, and we will see you on season two. Bye, you guys. <laughs>